The movie opens in Gotham City, and Arthur Fleck is getting ready for work in his company's office. He is applying makeup as a party clown. While staring at his reflection in the mirror, he puts two fingers in his mouth and twists them up and down a few times, and a single tear falls down his cheek. Moments later, he is dancing on the street with a sign promoting the store that hired him. Suddenly, some bullies approach him and take the sign from him. They run with the board. Arthur runs after them across the city and finds them waiting in an alley, where the children slam the board on his head. As he hits the ground, they start beating the shit out of him. After work, Arthur visits his therapist. He laughs for a while and says how difficult things are getting in the public eye. The therapist asks him whether he has been working on his journal. He gives her the diary and says that he is using it as a journal, but he is also using it as a joke diary, as he wants to become a stand-up comedian. While going through the pages, the therapist finds some disturbing phrases like, I just hope my death makes more sense than my life. Returning the notebook to Arthur. She asks him how he feels about attending these sessions. Arthur replies that he felt better when he was locked in the hospital and remembers banging his head against the door of his room. He asks the therapist if she can increase his medicines, but she says that he is already on seven different medications. Arthur replies that he wants to stop feeling bad. After the therapy session, Arthur takes the bus. He finds a child sitting and staring at him in front. He starts making silly expressions, and the child's mother scolds him for that. Arthur bursts into laughter out of control. The woman becomes worried, and he gives her a card explaining that he has a neurological disorder that causes him to laugh. After getting off the bus, he visits the pharmacy to pick up his medicines, and then he goes home. He checks the mailbox inside the building and goes to his apartment, where he lives with his mother, Penny Fleck. She asks if they have received any mail, and when he says no, she asks whether Thomas Wayne, her previous boss, hasn't been getting her letters. Arthur reminds her that Wayne is a busy businessman and insists she eat. He cuts up her food and then joins her on the bed to watch the Murray Franklin talk show. Arthur begins daydreaming. He sees himself in Franklin's audience, where the host hears him and asks him to get up. Arthur introduces himself and tells him how he takes care of his mother. Franklin invites Arthur to come down. He then goes down and feels happy to see people praising him. As he gets to Franklin's side, the host tells him that he would give up fame and television to have a child like Arthur, and they exchange hugs. Back in reality, Arthur smiles at this little dream. The next day at work, Arthur's body is clearly covered in bruises. Randall, one of his co-workers, approaches him and tells him that he heard about the beating incident. He then gives Arthur his gun. Gary, another employee, then interrupts them to inform Arthur that their boss is looking for him. When Arthur goes to meet him at his office, he tells him that he has received another complaint about his disappearance and failing to return the sign. Arthur tells his boss that he was robbed, but he doesn't believe him because no one would steal a sign. Thus, he threatens to deduct the sign from his salary and scolds him, but he remains silent with a smile. However, he leaves the meeting and kicks a trash can out of frustration. Later that day, when he returns to his flat, Arthur uses the lift with his neighbor, Sophie Dumond, and her daughter. When the lift stops for a little, Sophie says that the building is really horrible and makes a gesture with her hand. Arthur smiles, and when they reach their floor and exit the lift, he gives them the same gesture. A few moments later, Arthur is giving a bath to Penny. She keeps on asking him because she believes Wayne is a nice man who wouldn't appreciate them living this way. Arthur tells her not to worry about money because his stand-up show will soon be appearing in big clubs. Penny says she always used to think that to become a comedian, you need to be funny. After putting his mother to bed, Arthur watches a movie and uses his new gun. He pretends to talk to a girl and starts dancing to a song on the TV, but he unintentionally shoots the gun and tears a hole in the wall. When his mother wakes up and asks, asks about the noise. He replies that it's just a war film on TV. The next day, Arthur goes everywhere after Sophie, including on public transport. In the evening, he goes to watch a stand-up show to make notes. Later, he comes home and continues to write. The worst part of having a mental illness is that people expect you to behave as if you don't. The doorbell interrupts Arthur's writing, and when he opens the door, he finds Sophie. She asks him if he has been following her. When he admits it, she starts to worry about whether he was planning to rob her. He he says that if I had to do it, I could do it now. She smiles and tells him he's hilarious, which prompts Arthur to invite her to his stand-up show. Sophie accepts and walks away. The next day, Arthur is cheering up children in a hospital as a clown, when suddenly his gun drops to the ground while performing. He rushes to pick it up and tells the children to keep it a secret. However, later that evening, when he speaks with his boss over the phone, the man gets mad about this incident. Arthur tries to explain to his boss that the gun is just a prop, but 
but the boss doesn't believe him and tells Arthur that Randall told him he tried to buy a gun for him last week. Arthur gets fired, and in anger, he hits his head into the booth glass. Later, he takes the subway to go home. On the same train, three guys in suits are harassing a young lady. When Arthur starts laughing, the woman gets up and leaves. One of the guys starts to sing a song as the three of them come up to him. They remove his wig and bag, thinking about why he laughs. But instead of listening to him and giving back his belongings, they grab and punch him, throwing him to the ground and start kicking him. But this time, Arthur defends himself by pulling a gun and killing two of the men. When the subway stops at the station, the third guy runs out of the train. Arthur follows him outside and shoots him as he reaches the stairs. Arthur realizes what he's done as his ears begin to ring, and he runs from the station, runs from the streets, and reaches the bathroom of the local park. He panics for a moment in there, but then starts dancing. After a while, he returns to his apartment building, knocks on Sophie's door, and as soon as she opens the door, he gets in and kisses her. The door closes, and they spend the night together. The next morning, Arthur goes to his workplace to get all his belongings. He hears his colleagues talking about the recent news that a clown shot three men in the subway. They try to console him, including Randall. However, Arthur finds Randall's sympathy irritating and tells everyone that it was his gun that was used in the killing. Arthur punches the clock, which breaks and falls to the ground. On his way, he finds the sign saying don't forget to smile and removes two words to make it read don't smile. Back in his apartment, he takes his last few tablets and joins his mother to watch TV. Thomas Wayne is in the headlines because the men who got murdered were his employees. The host asks Wayne about the city's new anti-rich sentiment. He responds that he's thinking of running for mayor to address it. And when the host asks about the murderer, he says that it makes sense that the murderer wore a clown mask because he was a coward who wanted to hide his identity. He believes that everyone who does nothing in life is a clown. A few days later, Arthur is seeing his therapist again. He tries to tell her that he finally feels like he exists and people are starting to notice him. But she cuts the conversation short and informs him that this is his last session with her because the government has stopped their financing. When he asks to whom he will have to talk about his medication, she says nothing except for an apology. Later that evening, behind the scenes at a bar, Arthur is waiting for his turn to perform his stand-up routine. Sophie is in the general audience. When his turn comes, he goes on stage and starts laughing out of control. When he finally reads a few jokes from his notebook, they are completely useless. When the show is over, he walks out of the bar with Sophie, and as they walk together, he notices the newspaper on which the news of the murders is printed with a clown face. This makes him happy, especially when Sophie comments that the clown is a hero. When a car passes by, Arthur also notes that someone is wearing a clown mask that resembles the drawings on the newspaper. After having dinner with Sophie, he returns to his apartment and finds his mother sleeping in front of the TV. He wakes her up and puts her to bed. Before going to her room, she informs him she's written a new letter. Arthur opens the letter and reads that he is Wayne's illegitimate son. He gets angry at Penny. She is afraid of Arthur's reaction, so she locks herself in the bathroom and talks from inside. She explains to him that she and Wayne were in love but had to keep their appearances and that she was unable to speak because she had signed some papers. The next day, Arthur is reading a newspaper on the train and finds Wayne's picture on it. He tears it off and keeps it in his notebook. After a while, he is at the Wayne mansion, where a young Bruce Wayne is playing in the garden. When the child approaches the gate, Arthur starts showing him some magic tricks, but Bruce is not impressed. After asking his name, Arthur reaches through the gate and puts his fingers in his mouth to make him smile. Suddenly, Alfred interrupts them, pushes Bruce aside, and threatens Arthur to call the police. Arthur introduces himself as Penny's son and says that he's here to visit Mr. Wayne since he knows everything. Alfred tells him his mother was delusional and laughs at him. Arthur becomes angry and tries to choke him through the gates, but lets go of him when he sees Bruce. When he gets home in the evening, he discovers that paramedics are taking his mother to the hospital. He gets in the ambulance to go along with her. A few hours later, as Arthur is waiting outside the hospital, two police officers approach him. Though they had been talking to Penny when she had the stroke, now they want to interrogate Arthur about the subway murders. He tells them that his gun was just a prop and returns to his mother. Sophie accompanies him in the room. When she leaves, Arthur turns on the Franklin show on TV. He gets offended to see that they're making fun of him by playing bits from his stand-up performance. Later, when he returns to his apartment, the news on TV shows that people are rioting while wearing clown masks because Wayne called them clowns. Arthur decides to be a part of these protests. As he reaches there, he takes advantage of a fight happening between
training cops and civilians to sneak inside the building where Wayne is present, which is a movie theater. He enters the theater by stealing an employee's uniform and putting it on. He keeps an eye on Wayne while watching the movie. As he leaves the room, Arthur follows him to the washroom and confronts him about Penny. Wayne tells him that she was crazy, that he never touched her, and that Arthur was actually adopted. Arthur doesn't believe this, and in anger he starts laughing. Wayne punches him and walks away. Arthur returns to his apartment, ignores the call from the cops, and gets inside the fridge to spend the night. The next day, Franklin's production calls him to ask if he wants to be in the show, and he accepts the offer. After that, he takes the bus to Arkham State Hospital and asks for Penny's files. The clerk says that she was psychotic and hurt her child, but he is unable to give the file to Arthur, so he snatches it and runs away to hide and read it. According to the documents, Arthur was adopted. Penny misled Arthur about Wayne, and she raised him with an abusive boyfriend, who was eventually arrested. After hearing this news, Arthur returns home and enters Sophie's apartment without her permission. As Sophie finds him, she becomes scared and asks him to leave. Arthur then recalls their time together, and we find out that it was all in his imagination. The next day, Arthur visits Penny and tells her that his life is not a tragedy, but a comedy. He then kills her by suffocating her with a pillow. Later on, Arthur is preparing for the show at his apartment. He dyes his hair green and starts applying makeup while practicing his speech, but the doorbell interrupts him. He takes scissors and puts them in his trousers before opening the door. It's Gary and Randall, who have come to convey condolences upon Penny's death. Randall is worried because Arthur has his gun, and the police have been interrogating clowns. Arthur stabs him with the scissors and hits his head against the wall, eventually killing him. Gary freaks out and wants to leave. Arthur lets him go without hurting him, because he was the only person who had been kind to him. Arthur changes into a new suit and leaves for the show. On the way, he dances on the stairs, but the cops find him. He runs away and enters the subway, which is full of people going for the protest wearing clown masks. The cops follow him there. Arthur steals a clown mask from a man, causing them to start a fight. Because of the chaos, the cop accidentally shoots a civilian. When the subway stops at the station, everyone jumps on the cop. This allows Arthur to escape unnoticed. After a while, he arrives at the studio. While he's waiting in the dressing room, Franklin comes to see how he's doing and requests him for a clean show. Arthur accepts and assures that his clown makeup is not political, and he also requests to be introduced as Joker. Shortly after, he is called to the stage, and he enters while dancing. He kisses another guest, assuring them once again that his makeup is not political. He tries to tell a joke about death and gets scolded for it. Then he admits that he is the subway killer because he has nothing to lose. After a long speech about how the system treats the underprivileged, Arthur claims that Franklin is the same and that he called him to the show just to make fun of him. Arthur then shoots him on television. After the broadcast is over, the police arrest Arthur. The cops take him away. He witnesses all of the chaos where people are dressed as clowns. As he's praising everything, suddenly an ambulance hits the police car, knocking him out. After the protester, who had been driving the ambulance, comes out and finds Arthur, they take him out of the car with the help of other masked men. They place him on top of the car. In another area of the city, a protester follows Wayne as they leave a theater, telling Wayne he deserves it. He shoots him and his wife. Little Bruce is left alone with his parents' bodies. Back to Arthur, he wakes up and finds the protesters cheering and clapping for him. Arthur gets up on top of the car and starts dancing for them. He notices the blood coming out of his nose, so he uses the blood and draws a big smile around his mouth. After a few days, Arthur is admitted to the Arkham State Hospital. While a therapist is checking on him, he starts laughing. She asks him what's so funny, to which he replies that she wouldn't get it and starts singing, that's life. Moments later, Arthur leaves the room, leaving bloody footprints behind, and the movie ends. Subscribe to watch more movie recaps like this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next plot. Goodbye.